How's it going guys? Lee here. Now I'm not sure if you've heard but Commonwealth Bank has just recently come out with a new investing app. No it's not Comsec, it's Comsec. Get it? Comsec Pocket? Because it came out of my... Okay, never mind. So Comsec Pocket is essentially an app slash platform that allows people to micro invest into D ETFs and there's a range of ETFs that you can invest in which we'll go on later on about um, for the low price of $2 if it's under $1,000 and 0.2% if it's over $1,000. So there's obviously a niche and a lot of benefits in micro investing that people really seem to like. You know, it makes it really easy. You're diversified because you're in ETFs as opposed to selecting specific companies. And it allows you to go in with smaller amounts of money with very little brokerage fees and sometimes no brokerage fees at all. But that's where they catch you with the management fees. Oh, those dirty management fees. The other benefit of being in an ETF and using these micro investment platforms is that there's less volatility. So for somebody who wants to get their feet wet and just wants to get in and start investing, there's not, you know, huge fluctuations that somebody else might uh, experience if you're individually investing and selecting stocks. And finally, the last benefit in using a micro investing platform, which I think Commonwealth Bank has made the right move moving towards that route, which I think the other banks are going to make the move too slowly, but it removes the barrier to entry for investing into the stock market. Now, as we all know, terminology, understanding the stock market and investing in stocks can be quite a daunting thing, as opposed to real estate, you know, everybody, well, most people live in a house under a roof. And so when we talk about investing in property, people know that, you know, you're going to have to pay uh, rent or somebody's going to pay for the rent for the property that you buy. Um, and that prices go up over time generally. So that, you know, that we can understand. But when you're talking about the stock market, there's, you're understanding the flow, volatility, uh, you know, reports, the terms in the reports, you know, all these other things that can get above people's heads. And then also opening up a brokerage account, you know, how do I go about doing that? And then, you know, putting your money into, you know, that brokerage account, it, it can all be kind of scary and daunting for many investors or people who try to get their feet wet in that. So that's why these micro investing platforms work and have been very effective like Ray's in capturing a niche audience for this specific investing platform. So what's in it for Commonwealth Bank and why have they gotten into this micro investing space? Well, if you look at the space at the moment in Australia, there's only really one company slash app doing it really well and that's Ray's. I mean, over in the US, you've got a few platforms, but Ray's is the one in Australia that's invested a lot of money into advertising their app and platform and I know a lot of friends personally that have been using the platform and have um, you know a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars in the platform and they really enjoy it they just like getting their feet wet and just having the feel and being you know an investor now whilst I personally don't use raise I can see a lot worse things you can do with your money by spending it or putting it in some BitConnect thing what am I gonna do don't do it please so using raise and putting it into some form of ETS it's perfectly fine. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's not the worst thing that you can do. It's honestly probably much better than putting it into a savings account, even if it is a high yield savings account. And it also lets people experience a bit of volatility. You know, let's say I have $500 in the Raise app or Comsec pocket. And you know, my $500 goes from 500 down to 450 one day up to 580 one day, you know, sideways, backwards, forwards, you know, nobody knows really where the market's going. Having that experience in volatility is so crucial to understanding that you know, it's not always going to go up and experiencing that flows and maybe it gets that individual researching and looking as to why their money is going up or why it's going down. Now the friends and colleagues that I have who use Raise, they generally don't even do research once their money's going up or down, they just see it going up and down and they're like, oh, it's just a fluctuation in the market. So they kind of understand it and, you know, to each their own, I'm not going to force or, you know, preach and tell people they should go do their research. If they want to invest into these ETFs and if Raise works out really well, Cool, that's you know good on them. Now for CVA specifically, this is a great way for them to increase their customer base, retain their customer base, and raise revenue within that space. So how much are we talking about? Let's have a look. Now just doing a quick Google search, we can see that Commonwealth Bank has just under 16 million customers. Let's say conservatively of that 16 million, we have 5% of them use the Comsec Pocket app, which leaves us with 800,000 customers. Now of that 800,000 customers, let's say on average, they trade maybe conservatively, two times a year, only two times a year ever will they trade. So th there's gonna be about 1.6 million trades executed for that year. Now of that 1.6 million trades, again, conservatively, just conservatively, that they all execute trades of under $1,000, which attracts a rate of $2 a trade. So just within their conservative estimation alone, CBA could be looking at making, just in brokerage fees, 
3.2 million dollars in brokerage fees alone and that's only saying if five percent of their customer base use the app and they only execute two trades a year now more importantly than profits what cba is doing is creating an ecosystem and a space and from personal experience using anz westpac and nab or seeing other people use nab and the cba app i can say not only from myself from other people's opinions that cba has the best netbank app um, both on the phone and online and Comsec is the most used brokerage in Australia and although I'm using self wealth affiliate link in the description below to get some free trades I still use the Comsec tool to analyze and to get news and on the, my phone I can swipe to the left and just have my watch list in a widget that's very very quick to access and it updates like that there's no delay in the updating of the prices so I really enjoy all of their tools that they have to offer my only gripe is that their brokerage fees are too high but it's saying that you know somebody has to pay for the maintenance for all the tools that they have online so with that they already have a huge customer base of people executing trades on the Comsec platform so if we can move some more individuals over from their netbank platform to Comsec pocket which seems a little less daunting you know with the minimum of five dollars that you can start investing and a brokerage fee of only two dollars the barrier to entry and you know the fear that somebody might have in executing a trade or getting into the stock market is much much lessened and that's the whole purpose of micro investing and the advantage that raise has and has been having in the marketplace so with cba being the biggest deposit holder and also their platform concept being the biggest brokerage in australia there's obviously a moat that cba has in the australian financial space and they can use this moat obviously to shift people who are obviously already using their awesome netbank online platform and move them over and have them think about and look at investing over in Comsec Pocket. And because you're keeping them within their online platform slash ecosystem, everything's integrated and it makes it so much easier for people to do things and to migrate from one platform to the other. On top of that, it also means that people are more likely to again, take loans from Commonwealth Bank, do other forms of financing through Commonwealth Bank, insurance, car loans, whatever you can think of through Commonwealth Bank because they're so familiar and stuck within that ecosystem. And a great example of what this is like is like Apple. You know, once you get the, the iPhone, the iPhone talks to the MacBook and the MacBook maybe talks to your iPad and then that connects with your AirPods. It, you know, there's an ecosystem that people stay stuck in because it just works and it works really well. So apart from looking at the benefits for a CBA, what is the actual product and how does it work? the rates, the ETFs, who are they using, who are the providers, all that type of stuff. Let's go into it now. So again, just to go over some of the basics, they charge a $2 brokerage fee for investments of under $1,000 and 0.2% for anything over $1,000. So if you were to invest a $1,100, your brokerage fee would be $2.20. And this continues to scale up because it's a percentage. So Comsec Pocket is essentially removing all their barriers and making it easier to invest. And by doing that, they introduce seven investment options in the form of ETFs. And so the first one we have is the Aussie Top 200. Think of the ASX 200 or VAS or any other ETF out there in the ASX that tracks the top 200 companies, which by the way, 30% of it is finance anyway. So it's essentially just the money's going back into the banks. So the second ETF is the Global Top 100. Now this tracks the 100 global blue chip companies and you know, that's relatively safe because they are blue chip companies. So probably on the less riskier side and nothing much is really gonna happen. You might see slower growth, but it's steady. Now number three is the emerging markets. So they're looking at tracking the top companies in China, Taiwan, Korea, um, probably areas in the Middle East. This is gonna be volatile, definitely, but it's high risk, high reward. You're gonna, you might lose a lot in one day and depending on the political environment, you might gain a lot as well. So it really depends on your outlook in the world global economy and how things are doing. Um, one of my personal favorites is the Aussie dividends. So large Aussie companies that consistently pay above average dividends, uh, this ETF will look into those. And it's great if you want a steady income over time that's going to be compounding. So if you're tech savvy, there's an ETF for you as well. It's literally just called tech savvy. So it tracks the top 100 tech and non-financial NASDAQ companies. Uh, so that's over in the US. Um, again, this is kind of like the emerging markets without the political kind of, well, it includes a little bit of political turmoil, but not so much so. Here we're looking at, you know, your Facebooks, your Amazons, Tesla, you know, those type of companies that have a great potential for growth, but then can also, if things don't go right, or if there's a breach 
in privacy, then they can also go down drastically. So this one's a bit volatile as well. I don't know, there's always a rush when you invest into tech companies and you see things succeed and coming forth and there's something new, it's building towards something. I don't know, that's how I feel when I invested in Afterpay. But so tech savvy, great if you love tech and you see that developing in the future, which it will. But you have to be able to withstand a lot of the volatility. Sustainability leaders, global climate change with no unethical activity and investments. This is really like, if you're really into sustainability and see that as a growing field, but I can see that being integrated into some of the tech area as well. So I don't know, if you're that inclined into sustainability, then go for it. And then the last one is health -wise. So if you really know the medical space or you really feel a passion or see the growth in the medical space, this is the ETF for you. They're looking at global healthcare, biotech, medical, and pharma companies. Um, the thing with pharmaceutical or the medical space is that growth for them is there, but it doesn't happen until there's a breakout in a new discovery or something like that. I mean, now I own one or two medical stocks and they go up and then they go down, but it's very minor. There's not really much shifts, but when there is a shift and there is a new discovery or even reports come out of some form of research that affects it, it jumps up 12, you know, 10, 15, those kind of double digit figures, it jumps up in growth, but then it goes back down and then it's again, dawdling, dawdling, dawdling. And these research, you know, it, it might happen once every six months, once a year, once every three years. So you really have to wait for that growth to happen. Um, and I'm not too sure how, you know, ETFs that track those kind of health industries and companies go, but you know, if you're a, I don't know, if you work in the pharmaceutical industry and you really want to invest into, um, health ETFs, this is it. So the next question you might have is Lee, who are the providers of these ETFs? Is it Vanguard, which everybody talks about? It's not Vanguard. And you know, Comsec pocket has been criticized for this. Now the providers for these ETFs are as follows. Their Aussie top 200 is through iShares. Their Aussie dividends is through SPDR. Global top 100 is iShares. Emerging markets is iShares. Healthwise is iShares. Sustainability is BetaShares. And tech savvy, sorry, is EtaShares. And in my opinion, you know, all ETFs pretty much do the same thing. The biggest difference is essentially the fees that they charge. As we all know, Vanguard is renowned, renowned for charging low fees, which is why there's been a lot of flack being thrown at Comsec. Uh, pocket for not choosing Vanguard as their provider. On ETF stream, it seems that Comsec Pocket has basically chosen ETFs based on the low unit price as an investment criteria, which resulted in a wholesale snubbing of several ETFs provided, most notably Vanguard. Now, if you look at all these providers, their unit price is generally lower than Vanguard's offering. And when somebody can only put in $50 to micro invest each time, I can see how choosing a provider that has a lower unit price is significantly going to benefit um, the investor because then they can own one whole unit of that ETF as opposed to owning portions and micro parts of Vanguard's ETF. What's actually more important is looking at the fees that these ETF providers actually charge. Now for Comsec on the lower end, you're looking at 0.09%. So I'd assume that's your um, equivalent of the ASX 200, your Aussie high dividends might cost a little bit more in terms of management fees, but on the higher end, it's 0.67%. Now that might seem high, but let's remember, some of these funds are investing in markets over in Asia. Some of them are looking at tech stocks over in America. So there's a lot of management and rebalancing of the portfolio that has to happen to have these more diverse and more interesting ETFs um, when you're looking at investing you know, overseas and whatnot. And so although it seems high, let's remember again, the type of product that you're investing into. Also, let's keep this into context, right? Like somebody who has 10, 20, $50,000 probably isn't gonna use the Comsec Pocket app um, and isn't the audience that they're targeting, right? So 0.67 of um, a percent or 67 basis points of even $10,000 is only $67 per year that is being taken off. And the gains you'd make per year or, or the loss, you know, let's hope you don't lose, but the gains that you're making per year is probably going to be more than $67 that you're going to be losing in terms of management fee. And yes, you might say, but you know, Lee, it's still $67 throughout the year, but it's $67. Like you're probably, even if you just invested into the Aussie high dividends ETF, right? You're going to make more than $67 worth of dividends that year than you are in management fees. And this is, yeah, just don't worry about it too much. It's really small. Now, when we're talking about fees and rates, let's look at Raves, their competitor. They charge $2.50 per month, even if you don't execute a trade. And if your account is over $10,000, they charge a 0.275% um, per year rate just to 
manage your account. Now, I don't like the sound of that because, you know, if there's, let's say, a couple of months that people aren't investing because they don't have the money to, why are they being charged a maintenance fee per month to do so? You know, it just, just doesn't sit right with me. So, I'm not a fan of that business model, but I can see why they're doing it. Um, it's like a subscription service to keep the company afloat and going, whereas CBA is quite established already, so they have other forms of revenue to keep it pumping, and they also have a probably a very solid flow of customers in from their net banking platform. And if we're looking at rates difference in terms of ETF providers between Comsec and Raise, they use very similar providers um, across the board. Neither of them use Vanguard, so you know you can toss that Vanguard argument out the window. So concluding this, what are my overall thoughts? I guess overall, if you want to take investing more seriously, just actually not even if you want to take it more seriously. If you have over, if you're going to invest like a solid amount of money, like five, 10, over $10,000, then just go directly, open a brokerage account, just learn how to do that. You can do it online, call up any bank and learn how to do it um, and invest into the ETF just directly. Just do that um, because that too is also a set it and forget it and you don't have to think about it. But if you're unsure um, and if you really have no interest in understanding the economy or even learning how to open a brokerage account and doing all of that stuff, then yes, use Comsec Pocket. There's a lot worse things you can put your money into. There's a lot worse things you can do than um, just get, getting started with micro investing. And Comsec Pocket, you've done a great job uh, brokerage fee in terms of trading. And the platform seems to be quite clean. And if it's anything like Comsec, um, their main brokerage platform, then I have no doubt that it's gonna be rather smooth to operate and run through and see. So with all of that being said, guys, have a good one. Give me a like, subscribe, all of that jazz. And until next time, cheers.